So hello a bunch of good boys and good girls. Today we will speak about praise king. I just asked a question on Twitter. Is it a praise king or do you just crave human connection and to be valued? And obviously that's a tricky question because often it's both. Because yeah, you might feel like mm, I just want to be connected to someone or to this particular person yeah i just want to be seen i just want to be appreciated i want to be taken care of but what makes it a king when you get sexual arousal yeah when it happens when you get praise you also get aroused this is the main difference of king from just some of the preferences or just something that you like yeah that it gives you sexual arousal so for some people, yeah, actually some of them reply that, oh, I just want to be valued. I just want to be seen. Okay, but what about those people who actually developed praise kink? Can we say, oh, is it just a kink? Is it just a praise kink? What does it mean just a kink? There is no such thing as just a kink because a kink is a complex thing. Kink is always psychological. And okay, I'm not going to share any other examples, yeah? that sometimes bananas are just bananas for example a man who just loves woman's body and that's why uh, he collects panties right maybe that is connected to something psychological yeah but at the same time men just love women's bodies that's normal that's fine and i mean i don't think that there is something deep about that yeah but again it also depends on how it's expressed so let's get back to praise king you are in this certain environment uh, yeah let's talk about dom sub relationship or just bdsm scene you want to make sure that what you're looking for can be provided by the person you're with and when they understand what's actually going on obviously subs can be different yeah and now i'm speaking both about male and female but mostly male because I deal with male subs. So some subs are looking for protection, they're looking for care, and when you look at them, they are more gentle, they are more obedient rather than being proactive, yeah? Um, a different type of subs is when they are strong, they are masculine, and they are proactive, and they wanna serve the queen. And they also, like both of these types, they would be into praise king. I think that praise is such a powerful thing. So for someone who is like a masculine active doer, praise is a motivational thing. You give them praise, yeah, and it encourages them to do more. If we speak about the most like, let's say typical type of subs that are that is like presented in this bdsm scene and okay i'm not speaking about porn obviously but uh it's just it still affects people's minds yeah when you when you are new to this obviously you go online you start searching and the first thing you find is uh femdom porn which often does not reflect their reality but anyway if we speak about this like i don't want to say weak type yeah but like more gentle more dependent even if all of them they seem dependent yeah you create the scene where they are allowed to be dependent on you so both of them would be into uh, praise king and why is that mm. Yeah, we can think of different reasons. Why is that? Maybe he didn't have enough of that, or maybe he had uh, very close relationships with his mother or with some other female relative, and now he still wants more of that. Or maybe he didn't get it, and now he wants to fulfill that. And you might think that it is pretty logical for this subs to find a gentle dom, yeah, who's gonna praise them. But I noticed that lots of them would still go to, would still search for some kind of cruelty yeah, and abuse. Sometimes it's actually no quotation marks because it's always on the verge of being unhealthy. And that's a lot of that, especially online. Yeah, lots of people who just wouldn't care about you. Lots of them go for cruelty and aggression because aggression 
um, it is associated with power, knowledge, with competence. Yeah, this person knows what they do. For example, you want to be abused so much because this is also a strong person who can protect you. I'm talking about also abusive type of relationship. Yeah, why often a victim chooses this abuser? Yeah, because even if despite of this um, attitude towards her, which is very destructive and cruel, she or he can also see this uh, person as a strong person who's going to protect them because they're strong. And I want to remind you that BDSM scene is a space that recreates some unhealthy toxic scenario that you are not supposed to live in your real life, but you live through it. It's like a theater. It's like you, you can't really in, indulge into this in your real life here yeah, because not everyone is an actor, but when there is like a BDSM scene, all of you are actors. That's like drama therapy class. You have certain roles, you play these roles, and through acting, you start expressing yourself. Yeah, that's why I really um, see it as a great tool. Yeah, it's more than just fun. It's a great tool to live through your past traumas. So when you have some scene, intense scene full of pain, for example, aftercare is so necessary. That's why when you do this, please make sure that you do it with the right person, yeah, who is aware of aftercare if we speak about lost in dom sub relationships yeah that's daily reminder that you are valued this is something your dom tells you yeah that you are such a good boy you do this so well yeah you're doing a great job of pleasing her and this is such an important thing and i wish people i actually no people are already doing this people are already aware of different love languages yeah and this is one of love languages words of affirmation and this is important when people know their own styles and so it doesn't seem like too demanding for others when you literally give them some kind of instruction to yourself oh okay like i function like this i like this and that and it is important that they hear you and it also refers to normal relationships as well I don't want to call them vanilla relationships because I don't really like the word vanilla for non-kink stuff yet because like real normal life is far from vanilla <laughs> like it's tough I don't know nothing vanilla about that that's why I like dom sub dynamics so much that you can just communicate your needs yeah and also you can bring it to your other type of relationships you can commu communicate your needs you just know what you want you understand yourself and you understand the other person more if you want praise so be it but sometimes you have to earn that yeah like you're not just a good boy by default you have to earn the title <laughs> why you want to hear it i don't know and it will sound trivial but probably you didn't have enough of that as a child maybe as a child or maybe as an adult because i noticed that lots of men don't get enough compliments I was actually quite surprised meeting, um, yeah, of course there are different cultures, yeah? The culture I come from, that's actually quite the opposite because women compete who's more beautiful, they just compete for men and men are just like, give me this, give me that, yeah, and they are <laughs> lazy and are, so yeah, basically women just fight for their attention. But when I come across Western men, and I've been mostly dealing with Western men in the recent years. Uh, it is quite the opposite situation. And I can see how lonely they are. I can see how insecure they get. Or just, yeah, that's a minute of uh, praise for men and just sympathy for men. All of a sudden, I know I didn't expect that. I'm joking, obviously, I know that I like men. They just want to be rewarded for their efforts. They just want to be seen. This is woman's main fear, that she would be assaulted, that she would be harassed, that she would be attacked, she would be murdered or raped. But man's main fear is that he would be ignored and forgotten. 
men want to feel important. I think that when we go to the direction of matriarchy and we are, we are, like, I think that's inevitable. Like really, men should not be afraid that women are going to treat them the, the same way men have been treating women for centuries. <laughs> that's not the case. Men will just stay ignored. So praise king. Yeah, getting back to the question, is it a praise kink or you just want to be seen and valued and you want a human connection? Because not everything is a kink. I feel like nowadays people, despite of getting like also open-minded and uh, self-aware and just aware of many different things, is if they are scared of intimacy. And also, if we look at young generations, they consume too much online stuff. They just spend way too much time online. And unfortunately, lots of them watch too much porn. And they educate themselves on kinks, on different uh, mental illnesses, uh, different mental health conditions, and different this and different that, or 100 genders. Your mind gets so expanded, yeah, you are so enlightened about things. You are such a superhuman that you can grasp all these aspects of life. Yeah, like, too much. That's too much of overthinking. And there is this desire to label everything. I can see that kink is getting popular, but not everything is a kink. Sometimes you just want human connection. You just want true feelings. You just want to be loved. That's, that's the main reason why we do everything. That's the main thing that drives us. Just like any kink, praise kink is based on your psyche finding an outlet to receive love that you didn't receive as a child. You don't have to be like too smart to guess what it means. It's on the surface. Oh, make your mommy happy. Make your daddy happy. Hmm, where does it come from? I don't even know. When you are a child, your parents are like gods for you. If something goes wrong, if they're angry with you, if they're disappointed, that's always your fault. This is how a child feels. And to get this acceptance and praise from parents, that's like the biggest reward for a child. And when you don't get it, you think that there is something wrong with you. And not everyone got the best parents who read lots of books on psychology yeah, and who finished the course, how to be a parent. And again, just a reminder in order to practice praise kink or just praise after all, you don't have to join any cool BDSM club, you just have to be open to communicate with your partner if you have one or if you don't, like still if you interact with someone. Uh, I'm not talking about um, the kink world, not at all. I just want to encourage people to step away from that or to step away from the idea that you can only experience certain things only if you join this lifestyle. Like, you don't have to do it. You don't have to call it kink at all. You just have to integrate the principles in your normal daily life relationships with other people. Yeah, if you trust someone, if you get intimate with someone, you can ask them about these things. And I know that for lots of people, it might sound strange. That's why we have open conversations. And if you cannot be open with your partner, well, I have bad news for you. Kink or not, that's still the same need. Yeah, it's just when it's a kink, in this way, your psyche found an outlet how to sexualize it, how to integrate it in your, in your mind. Yeah, that you want it. Because when you also get sexual aroused, yeah, when you get a sexual release after that, when you receive what you want, that's even more motivation for you to find that. And somehow that's essential for your being and your subconsciousness just like pushes you to find it and just gives you more reason to do that. Because if it's deep down in your sexuality, if, if it's rooted there, if it's like intertwined, you will rush to find it.
because we tend to ignore our needs if they are not urgent and somehow sexual needs are more urgent especially for men so maybe if you didn't have this kink you wouldn't be able to receive what you need okay that's it for today you can share your stories in the comments down below i'm curious what you have to say about the praise kink if you have it or not okay bye